obviously there's a the majority of people say it does nothing it won't affect you it won't hurt anything but i mean you're sitting there going what if i'm the one that puts a turbo or two turbos through the motor so i'm sporting the mo for november <laughs> i got, got our dog a mullet hey show us your mullet <laughs> Welcome back. Today, bulk controversy. I was on the forums of GTR forums just looking up RB26 stuff for something totally unrelated. I think it was fuel system related, just about future mods. And I was on like page 20 of this forum and I saw a passing comment of a guy that said, something, 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 have you removed the factory boost restrictor? The fucking what? <laughs> I thought, I'm gonna have to have a look into this. Maybe they all come with this restrictor. We're gonna remove it. And there's controversy to it because apparently your turbos can blow up. The most common storyline is that Nissan made the GTR this crazy animal that it is. And then under the accordance of the gentleman's agreement for the Japanese domestic market, uh, then they actually put the restrictor in there to keep it below the whatever the agreed value was. So people say that you can just take it out and it's already fine. Other people say, no, you can't do that because your turbos will literally explode because they're ceramic wheels. Um, so I'm gonna run that gauntlet, I reckon. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is actually just go for a rip. One, because I haven't actually driven the car in a long time, so I wanna just get the feel of it again so it's familiar when we take it out to see if there's any actual difference. Plus, I'll get some footage of the gauge just to see what it actually runs. Interesting to see what this exact car does rather than just reading what people say on forums. So, first things first, let's go for a spin. All right, so, it's been a little while since I've driven the car, but I just wanted to get a feel for it so that I can come back this afternoon and, and see if there's any difference. The rumor has it, there's a couple PSI in it. Now, I believe the stock PSI for RB26 is, is around, I think it actually changes from 32, 33, 34, but I think this one should be about nine PSI. That's the rule of thumb. And once you take the restrictor out, word on the street is it goes up to about 14. Now, that's considerable. So some people say, yep, felt a massive difference best thing I did with the car until I did XYZ mods, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do, hopefully. Other people say, nah, it's meant to be there, the car's not tuned for it, you're gonna blow your car up, you're going to nuke your motor, the list goes on. But I must say, the the people saying it's fine, it's all good, I've been doing it for years and it's all, it's all fine, that's 90% of the people. And then there's 10% that whatever, for whatever other reason. I will get some footage of our little boost gauge here and see what she's reading. It's still, even this, it still makes me smile every time I drive it, eh? This is truly the sickest car ever. And I'll see if I can film this boost gauge and we can actually get a reference of what's going on and when and how far it goes and boost. minutes later have a look under here oof damn still so clean I don't know why but they decided to put their boost control solenoid down there jammed in the batch with the fuse box I think 32's are on the strut tower I think 33's 34's are somewhere similar but I've got it on good authority that that line that one 
is the one with the restrictor in it. So we're going to rip that out, have a look in there, uh, and then that one there goes down and then actually under the plenum around the back and then that feeds the turbos. So have a look inside there and rip out this little golden olive, they call it. They don't call it the golden olives, but they call it an olive. Thank you. This is what she looks like. Uh, the first bit of a giveaway, I guess you'd call it, is this line here goes from the boost control solenoid over to the turbos. But for some reason, there's this joint. There's, they've put a barb in there. So on the outside looking in, you'd be like, why would they put that joint in there? And the only thing I can come to the conclusion of is because this piece here is the one with the restrictor in it. Um, and so they had to put a joint in there so people can identify it so you can rip it out easily. That makes sense to me. But this is the piece in question. And if you look down that end, you can see there she is. So we've got to figure out how to get that out, which I have no idea. I might heat it up with some fire and see if we can pull it out. But there's nothing to it though. That's the piece of hose. So. So if you were to compare that little thing to that, pretty big difference. So one other thing I did just notice is um, probably a blessing in disguise I actually did do this. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, the tube itself, so that's not doing me any favors, I don't reckon. So I'm just gonna nib that little thing off. That will purely be a direct result of those clamps. Those clamps are just shit. Everyone that uses them would know that they are dog shit. Um, obviously, that's why people go to speed flow fittings or even just hose clamps. Hose clamps are way better. Um, anyway, back in the car now and more boost. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Done. From there, around and across, over to the turbos. Not that it's any way related to this video, but I thought I'd just give a little shout out to any stag boys out there. I was looking into the fuel system, and if you're looking for your fuel injector ballast, and you go on the forums, and all the GTR guys are saying it's on the strut tower, it's on the strut tower, it's on the strut tower. It's not on the strut tower, in our case. If you come over to the intake, and have a look in there, in there. Don't go wandering around up here like Blake did for a few hours. Um, just go over there. Anyway, let's start this up. Okay, we're rolling. So far, absolutely no change. Gauge has been sitting still and everything feels normal, but we haven't hit boost. I'm just gonna just drive first just to see what's going on everything's normal <laughs> obviously there's a the majority of people say it does nothing it won't affect you it won't hurt anything but i mean you're sitting there <laughs> going yeah but what if i'm the one <laughs> what if what if i'm the one that puts a turbo or two turbos through the motor <laughs> Yes, definitely. As it really starts to come on, like maybe after like four grand, three and a half grand ish, that was definitely more of a pull. Um, and I'm very, very qualified at pulling. That was nice. That was a nice little surprise, actually. Um, I'll have to keep an eye on the gauge here to see what she wants to, what she wants to go to. So second gear and flat. Oh yeah, 
I still didn't look at the gauge, but there's there's a nice little it's a nice little touch actually. I like that. When you really get up it, it um it's definitely definitely doing a bit. stock but um, definitely makes a difference for sure and you can definitely see it on the boost gauge I can see it on the boost gauge now it's going well and truly above that first line which is where it was sitting before there was a few arguments to be made of oh it does nothing it does nothing well that's just completely wrong it, it physically is doing something we're obviously measuring more boost there's another argument there to say, well, you can't even feel it. I would be on the side that says, no, you definitely can feel it. It's definitely a little, yeah. It's just a little bit more alive, that's all. It's definitely not crazy. Still a little bit lazy down low. I was reading another thing that uh, said there was a, uh, there's a solenoid or a, there's some sort of like boost setting or anyway, if someone can correct me on that, um, there is some sort of, under X amount of RPM, I think it's like under 3500 RPM, there's like one boost setting and then as it goes over that, then it, it gives it full boost. I'm sure I can hear the turbos just going So we are back, the car survived its maiden voyage, which is sick, turbos haven't blown up yet. Uh, definitely can feel it, definitely in my opinion you can feel it more, uh, you can see it on the gauge there, uh, you can see that like before it was about that one line, I think that gauge reads in, um, in mercury, millimetres of mercury, uh, I don't know why it does that, Japanese guys doing Japanese things, but you can definitely feel it, so uh, it's a nice little interim in between now and what's to come and hopefully um, well, we've just had Black Friday sales, so Golby's order should arrive this week sometime, and that will be lots of fun. But anyway, don't mind the uh, don't mind the bench at the moment. We are in the middle of full hardcore mower mods, um, which you guys will actually see. I've got some nice little things here, nice little billet clutch assembly. But anyway, uh, oh, and obviously I forgot to mention Mo for the Movember. Um, you gonna come say hello? Come on. So I'm sporting the mo for November. <laughs> I got, got our dog a mullet. <laughs> oh, you got a big stretch, do you? <laughs> hey, hey, show me your mullet. Show me your mullet, Evie. Hey, show me your mullet. <laughs> look, at, look at her haircut. Hey, show us your mullet. Hey. Hey, you just want belly rubs, don't you? You do want belly rubs. Hey, show us your mullet. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one. Bye. Ever since you shut the door on everything we knew, you're too late for love.